فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم القاعدة الرابعة والعشرون The 24th Qa'idah The 24th Qa'idah is أنهم يقررون أن مقاصد الشريعة ثلاثة أهل السنة والجماعة They establish They affirm That The objectives Of the religion are three The objectives Of the religion Are three it's called Maqasid al Sharia. There are three things. Al Awal, the first thing that the Sharia, his objective is Dar ul Mafasid, repelling harm. Repelling harm. Which is well known, Al Ma'roof, in the Ahlil Usuri, but Bid Daruriyat. And according to the scholars of Usul al Fiqh, is what's known as Al Daruriyat, necessity. And the third, sorry, the second thing that, the, that they affirm is from the objectives of the Sharia is جلب المصالح جلب المصالح Bringing about good المعروف عند الأهل الأصول بالحاجيات Which is known according to the scholars of Usul al-Fiqh It's known as حاجيات والثالث and the third thing which they believe is from the objectives of the Sharia is الجري على مكارم الأخلاق ومحاسن العادات to be in accordance to good etiquettes and good manners which is known according to the usuliyin بالتحسينيات والتتميات I'm a wet tatmimat, as the author said. Which is well known according to the Usuliyin as a tahsiniyat wa tatmimat. So they believe Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that the objectives of the Sharia are how many things? Three things. The first one is to repel evil, to get rid of evil, eradicate evil. The second thing is to bring about good. And the third thing is to perfect, basically. It is to perfect it, to complete it. Whichever good that they were bringing, they want to complete it. Whatever harm that they were trying to bring it, they want to fully eradicate it in its complete form. They want to complete it. So let's look at the first of the three objectives of the Sharia. The first one was what? Repairing? Repelling what? Evil. And this is called, it's called Ad-Daruriyat, necessities, right? Usul al-Fiqh, the scholars of Usul al-Fiqh, they call this Daruriyat, necessity. Are you with me? And they are five things. The first ones of the, is, of, is five things. So the repelling of the evil is five things. The first one is repelling evil from the religion. The first one is religion. The religion came to protect, it came to safeguard any harm from, for your religion. That's the first thing. The second is your nafs. The Sharia came to protect your nafs from any harm. That's why in the Sharia, a person who kills another person is killed for them. Is to protect your nafs. That's why Allah says in the Quran, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاصِ حَيَاةٌ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ That the person who kills a person is killed for them. Because why? It's to protect people's nafs. The third one is al-aql. Your brain and your sanity. The Sharia came to protect your sanity. That's why you're not allowed to what? You're not allowed to take alcohol and that which intoxicates. The Sharia prohibited you that from that.
Also, the fourth thing, fourth thing that the Sharia came to protect is what? Az zina. So, a nasab, nasab, your lineage. So, the fourth one is lineage. The fourth thing that the Sharia came to protect is your lineage. So, the Sharia prohibited zina. Zina messes people's lineages. You there? A woman is married, but she's sleeping with another man. She has a child. Whose child is this? Destroyed the whole lineage now. Is it his child? Is it your child? He doesn't know that you're cheating on him. And so you have a child with, him, with another man. But he, he's raising him. Yeah. He's raising him as his own child. But in reality, that's not his daughter. So when this girl grows up, it's actually not his daughter. She's not wearing a hijab in front of another man. But he thinks it's his daughter. And trials and tribulations are coming from this. So the Sharia prohibited this, con this concept of messing people's lineages up. This girl is going to inherit another man's money that's not even hers. Are you with me? And he's marrying her off when he's not even her guardian. All of those things are messing up. I mean, she's taking a name of a man that's not her father. Sah? All of this is what? Is that the lineage is not being protected here. And a woman is told to stay in her menses, right? She's told when she's divorced, she has to count three menstrual cycles. I'm a three purities, three, three pure sage situations. If this woman doesn't, and as soon as this man divorces her, she jumps onto another man and she gets pregnant, whose child is this? Is it the first man that she was married to her ex-husband? Or is it actually she's pregnant for the second man that she's married to? Whose child is this? She didn't wait for the idda to finish. This is destroying the lineage. So the Sharia told her, وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوءٍ That she has to sit around for three قُرُوءٍ What about the woman who her husband dies? She loses her husband. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يُتَوَفَّوْنَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَذَرُونَ أَزْوَادًا يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ أَرْبَعَةَ أَشْهُرٍ وَعَشْرًا صح? And everything goes like that. What about the woman who's pregnant? Her husband divorces her and she gives birth out of shock from what he says to her. When is the idda over? That's it, she's finished now. That split second, while she's on the labor table, she play, 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 uh, it's bed, she can get married if she wishes to. Are you with me? Her idda finishes as soon as, she, as soon as she gave birth to that child. That's it, it's finished, it's over. She doesn't have to count a cycle. All of these are things that the Sharia has set. All of this is to protect the lineage. Wallah, it's so sad today you find people are talking about zina like it's no problem. No problem. A sister will come up to you, Wallah, face to face and say, Brother, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam. Brother, I committed zina. Why are you telling me for? Why are you telling me for? Even if you did repent to Allah, ask Allah for forgiveness. You don't have to tell anyone. Why are you telling anyone? Why are you talking about it? Repent, ask Allah for forgiveness. Ask who? Ask Allah for forgiveness. Another one, another one, he's what? He's what talking about it. My wife was telling me yesterday she was going out to get something from the shop and then she came across a man talking on the phone and he was talking about a zina which he did with a woman. I did this to her, I did this to her, I did this to her. He's talking about it. I thought she was a good girl but now I realize she's not. And what does that make you? What does it make you? What, are you a good guy now? This is the sad reality. People are talking about zina like it's happy days, like there's nothing wrong with it. Like it's something good. They are talking about zina like it's something good, something to boast about. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. It's something to be embarrassed about. That even when you do start practicing, you've got this written in your history. You should be, don't talk about it. If you did the mistake and the sin came from you, Repent, ask Allah for forgiveness and keep it to yourself. Never talk to anybody about it. Never talk about it. Don't publicize it and speak about it and talk about it and laugh about it and text it and WhatsApp it. So the Sharia came to protect people's lineages. People's lineage, honor. The fifth thing is ird, your honor. The Sharia came to protect your honor. Nobody's allowed to destroy your honor. That's why 
backbiting is haram. Allah says, "Wala yaghtab ba'dukum ba'da." Don't backbite one another. Ay yuhibbu ahadukum an yaakula lahm akhihi maytan fa karihtumuh. Does one of you want to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You're not allowed to backbite and you're not allowed to. Also, you're not allowed to call people bad names that they don't like. وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ بِئْسَ لِسْمُ الْفُسُوقُ بَعْدَ الْإِيمَانِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ To believe that it is, it's da'wat ahli sunnati wal jama'ah and it is salafiyya to call people names, to call people names, to call people animals like dogs, donkey, things like that, and to think that is that is the belief of Ahl Sunnah, that is Aqeed of Ahl Sunnah, you're upon the saved sect by calling people animal. That's shaitan fooling you. This is from the Daruriyat al Khams. It's from the five things that the religion came to protect your honor. Your honor is sacred. I am not allowed to go out and speak about your honor. I'm not allowed to slander you and you're, speak about your honor. And never in any way, form, or shape. Rather, the man who speaks about a woman's honor by saying she committed zina or a man saying that uh, the vice, vice versa Allah says وَالَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْسَنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءِ and you haven't come with four witnesses فَجِلِدُوهُمْ تَمَانِينَ جَلْدَ 80 lashes will be hit وَلَا تَقْبَلُوا لَهُمْ شَعَادَةً أَبَدًا and any, no testimony will be taken from them وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ and they are fasiqs إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَعْبُوا except those who repent from it the sixth thing which the religion came to protect is al-mal, your wealth. It's the sixth thing in which the religion came to protect is your wealth. <coughs> Some of the scholars, they add ird and nasab into same. They made it one and they just make it five. Huh? The lineage and your honor are both the same, right? They say that it's the same. The religion came to protect your, relig your, your money. You're not allowed to steal from somebody. You're not allowed to rob from somebody and take their rights away from them. Riba is stealing. As a form of what? Stealing oppression. Are you with me? Is stealing oppression? Yes. Riba is also a form of oppression. You're sucking a person's blood, even though they can consented to it. Even though they consented to it, they agreed to it. It's still a what? It's still an oppression. Ulidalik Shaykh Ulusam Taymiyyah says, الظلم في المال الظلماني That oppression in the wealth is two types of oppression. ظلم An oppression where the person hasn't agreed to it. Which is when you rob their money and you take their wealth. And another oppression is the one they accept and they agree to it. It still makes it oppression. <coughs> the sixth, so those six are the ضروريات the, the harm that the religion repels from those six. And the second thing is Jalbul Masalih, bringing about good. Bringing about what? Bringing about good. The Masalih that the religion come, came to bring is Masalih connected to your religion and Masalih. Masalih means good. Benefits that are connected to your religion and benefits that are connected to your dunya. The religion came to bring it about. That's why Allah says in the Quran, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمُ الصَّلَاةِ When you finish the prayer, فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Go and spread on the earth of Allah. وَبَتَوْهُ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ Look for the virtues of Allah. Go and trade and do your business now. You came and you prayed the Salat al-Jum'ah, go out and make money. Because this is your maslaha. You need to. You need to sustain yourself and you need to sustain your family. And that's why in the Quran the word maslaha is used as fadl. That's the Quranic term that's used. Allah says, look for example, Allah also says, لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَضْلًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Allah says in another ayah, وَآخَرُونَ يَضْرِبُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَبْتَغُونَ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ That's the word that's used. Which is looking for the virtues of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Marriages are permitted and legislated because it's something you need. There's a maslaha in it. The sharia is bringing that masalih. The masalih that the sharia is bringing is of two types. The benefits that the sharia are bringing to are, are two types. 
a benefit that's connected to individuals. So it's an individual benefit. And there's another one which is called the communal benefit. It's the community that are all going to reap the benefits of this. The first one, which is the individual benefit, is you praying Qiyamul Layl, you fasting Mondays and Thursdays, and etc. That's your individual benefit that you're reaping. But there's also communal benefit, which means that educating the people and teaching the people. This is a benefit that is communal. It means that the community and others are indulging and they are also sharing this benefit with you. Are we all together, brothers and sisters? So the masalih are two types. Masalih which are qasirah and masalih which are what? Muta'addiyah. Masalih which are restricted to you, benefits are restricted to you, and benefits which are restricted to others. And that's why in the religion, if these two are kind of contradicting one another, meaning you're in a situation where it's about your own, your personal benefit, or the benefit of the community and the benefit of the people around you, which one does the Sharia give more importance to? It gives more importance to, and now you should give precedence to, the communal benefit. So for example, your wife asks you, for instance, to teach her Islamic knowledge in a particular matter, and you had the option, you, had the, you wanted to pray at night, and that's what you wanted to do. And yay! This may not please many brothers. You wanted to pray your Qiyamul Layl, Okay, or you wanted to even sleep, and she asked you, can you go over this particular issue for me? Because it involves a benefit, which somebody else is going to benefit from it, you will now have to, I mean, you should, you should in this situation, sit up and just go through it with them. Are you with me? And it's evidence for this, Imam Ahmed, they said to him, which one is more beloved to you? A person who fasts? A person who prays, a person who comes with righteous deeds, or the one who sits and s criticizes and warns against the deviated people. And Imam Muhammad said, the one who sits and warns against the people is more beloved to me than the one who prays. The reason why is because the one who prays, he's only benefiting himself. But the one who's warning the people from the dangers that are coming, and saying to the people, be careful, be, stay away from this, he's giving the people a benefit. Are you there? And, giving, and it's sad because nowadays when people are weighing this, they say, Akhi Fulan is better than you. At least he's in the masjid every day reading Quran. All you're doing is sitting here and you're warning against innovation and speaking about innovation. Sah? Which of the two is lacking better? In the Sharia, which one is better? Is the fi'l which is muta'adi. Like if your warning is based upon hawa, desires, you're just warning up against people because you feel like it and it's a game for you, then la shaka wa la rayb, what you're taking is not called warning for the shaykh of the Sharia, it's called backbiting. It's called what? It's called backbiting. The third one was what? Jari ala makarim al akhlaq, which is basically good etiquette, good manners. Okay? Good etiquette and good manners are not from the what? They don't fall under the daruriyat, the necessity. And they don't also fall under the things that are hajiyat, but they fall under the what? They fall under the tahsiniyat, and the tatmimat, the, the things that complete the perfect things. Al qaidatul khamisat wal ishroon, the twenty fifth qaida. أهل السنة والجماعة the methodology is what بيان بعض الأسباب الداعية للترويج وقبول الباطل that they clarify the causes that lead to the spreading of falsehood and acceptance of falsehood they clarify it they tell the people the things that are causing and that are leading to the falsehood in spreading they, they clarify it, they tell the people. Allah says in the Quran, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ لَوْ لَا يُكَلِّمُ لَاللَّهُ أَوْ تَاتِينَا آيَةً كَذَلِكَ قَالَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ مِثْلَ قَوْلِهِمْ تَشَابَهَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ قَدْ بَيَّنَّ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يُوْقِنُونَ Allah also says, 
atawasaw bih bal hum qaumun ta'un Allah says wa qala alladhina and the ones alladhina la ya'lamuna those who don't know they say lawla yukallimuna Allah aw ta'tina ayah if only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to us or he gave us a sign kadhalika qala alladhina min qablihim mithla qawlihim and like that the, those who came before them said the same Allah says tashabahat qulubuhum their statements and their hearts have become similar Allah then says qad bayyanna al-ayat we have clarified the signs liqaumi yuqinun we have clarified the signs for those who have certainty in them in other words Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he clarified the truth and he made the truth very clear he says in the Quran wa kadhalika uh, Allah says in the Quran وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ And like that, we distinguish the verses and we clarify everything and we make the path of the criminals known. We say this is the path of the criminal. The Qur'an explained the path of the criminals and the misguided ones and the corrupt ones. It explained to us what they are upon and what they are calling to and because of that, I did a series called As-Sawarifu An Al-Haq. The things that cause on my channel, I spoke about the things that cause deviation from the truth. What will make a person deviated from the truth? I brought, I brought that. So Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah are known to warn against those things. And they mention what are the things that are leading to the acceptance of falsehood and they will tell the people Ya ikhwatil kiram the reason why this falsehood is spreading is because of this and this and this and this this is manhaj ahli sunnati wal jama'ah this is the methodology of who? the methodology of ahli sunnati wal jama'ah and so this because this topic I've spoken about it in very 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 lengthy details I'm going to leave it there inshallah and I'll let you watch it from there but I'm going to mention some of the reasons Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned like in even though I've spoken about it in more details I'm going to mention some examples that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentions he mentions six reasons in his kitab As-Sawa'iq al-Mursala why the falsehood will spread the first reason he mentions is is sahibuhu, that a person will come to a particular issue believing and assuming it because of somebody who placed the wordings in a very good wording the wording was decorated nicely for him the person who's putting this falsehood forward they said it to you in a very eloquent manner they're very silver-tongued you see they've put it in a very well-structured manner and so these people whose hearts are very weak your heart, your heart is your mind and heart is very weak what do you hasten to you hasten to believe in what this person is saying and you hasten to blind following this individual لذلك Allah said in the Quran وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيِّنْ عَدُوًا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْضٍ زُخْرُفَ الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوهُ فَذَرْهُمْ وَمَا يَفْتَرُونَ Allah says وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا and like that we have made for every prophet an enemy and those enemies are the jinn and those enemies are also from the ins they, they send revelation to one another meaning they whisper to one another beautified speech what they tell each other is words that are very well organized well structured so this is how they send their misguidance to the people they fool them by their eloquency and the way they stand and their structure and they study public speech and they study neuro-linguistic programming and 
eloquency in this and so soulful. And so when they come, they portray their ba'at but in a very eloquent way. The second reason why the falsehood would spread is because the person will do the opposite to the truth. He will ugly fight the truth, if that's even a word. What he will do is he will make the truth look ugly. He will give the truth a very bad form and a very bad image. So he will give the, 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 the truth a very bad term, a very bad wording to it. For example, they'll say to you, Ya Akhi, you know what you are? You're Wahhabi. They're like, I don't want to be them. Who are they? So you start in hating the what? The belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Just like the previous ones, they used to call Ahl Sunnah what? Hashawiyya. They will give these names. They will call them Mujbira. They will call them Mujassima, Mushabbiha. These are terms that nobody will want to take those terms. Who, would, who, would, who, would, who wants to be a Mushabbiha? No one wants to be a Mushabbiha. Mushabbiha means that you're resembling Allah to the creation. Just because you're affirming Allah's characteristics that He's mentioned about Him in the Quran, they will call you a mushabbiha. So you're running away from that word. So then you say, you know what, I'm not going to take it. Okay, I'm not going to affirm the characteristics for Him. They tag these bad names with you. Sah? And the same is what we hear today. You're madkhali, you're madkhali. Sah? That's why they, they, they coin these terms on you. Are you there? So the person will run away from the truth. And they will make the truth look very ugly in the wordings that they use. Huh? Are you there? They will make it look very, very ugly. Sah? Asabab al Thalith. The third reason why it spreads is. The person who this mistake occurs from is a person who is truly respected in the community. He's a man of true knowledge. He's a man of a man of uh, high status, methylan. Or even that innovator is of high level and of high status within the people. He's maybe the chief of the tribe. He's maybe uh, the leader of the country. Or he's even from the Prophet's family, methylan. He's Alul Bayt, methylan. You see? And the people are praising this individual. So then the people are going to say to Yaqi, Al Imam so and so, Mithal al Mas'alatu Al Imam Abu Hanifa Rahimallah Mas'alatul Iman. Is Abu Hanifa from the great Aimatul Kibar? Naam is from it. But did he do a mistake in Mas'alatul Iman? Yeah? But the person won't look at that. They'll say, Imam, Imam. So the fa that falsehood will spread. And this is the majority of the people, the problem that they go through from. They, go through from. they have good high thoughts of the sayah who's saying this. But they, they don't have proofs. They'll say, Akhi, this sheikh is ali, man. Look at his credentials. Look at who praised him. But that doesn't mean he can't do a mistake. That doesn't mean he's not got a fault in this particular issue. He's wrong. But they they connect the speech to the one who is saying it. Are you with me? So whenever you say the mistake, the speech is wrong, they can't fathom that due to the fact that they are honoring him as an individual and his status. And that's the problem that all the prophets had, right? What were they saying? Inna wajadna aba'ana ala ummah wa inna ala athari muqtadun. We found our forefathers, our dads were upon this man. Are we going to leave this for our parents? Are we going to leave this for our dads? And you find many of you today, right? You see that. Like when you tell them things, they're like, وَرِثْنَا كَابِرًا عَنْ كَابِرًا This is what we've been upon all our lives. Our fathers passed it over to their fathers, passed it over to their fathers. This is, uh, am I going to say my dad's wrong? And the ulama of my time are wrong? No, 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 no. So it's not based on ilm and hujjah and proof. It's more based upon the status of individuals. Sheikh so-and-so said this. But then Sheikh so-and-so, Allah is greater than him. And the messenger is greater than him. 
the fourth reason why the falsehood was spread is The person basically, he accepts a particular science. For example, philosophy. The person believes he doesn't know philosophy. And a lot of the times this happens. A person accepts a principle in a particular field. He accepts it and he takes it on. Are you with me, brothers? He takes it on board. He uses that principle of philosophy. But what really is causing him is that it's coming with a foundation and a principle that's going to lead to so many other textual evidences to have to be broken because of it. So this is what happens. A lot of the people, they saw philosophy and they saw these sciences and stuff like that. Like for example, what happens in the West today, people see the technology that they've reached and how they've become advanced and progressed in life. And that, mashallah, they know the dunya. But they conflate the dunya with the akhirah. These people are good at their dunya, but that doesn't mean they know nothing about the akhirah. So then the person adopts that from them as well and starts to religious related issues also conflate with their worldly issues. So he takes them wholeheartedly, basically. The fifth reason he mentions is the language and the Arabic language being an Arabic which they're not they're not aware of. 